Uh, my name is Hideaki Shiroyama from the University of Tokyo. And my work on political science, but I, I happen to work on the issue, uh, interface between the science, technology, and public policy issue. And I have been, happen to be working on the nuclear safety regulation is, uh, for a while, and uh, about a decade. And actually, even before Fukushima, uh, we had a chance to organize a kind of the, uh, the joint research project involving a stakeholder, including the industry and regulator and so on. And we discussed about possible regulatory uh, reform and also the how to involve the local government in the structure is one of the issues. So that was the context I studied about uh, Kuri, and I spent a half year uh, in Sciences Po uh, in 2008, and also I had a chance to do a kind of research of the Kuri in 2009, and th this was the background of what we did. But I, I would like to present today the kind of the issue we uh, researched in the context of the current uh, nuclear policy in Japan. Uh, in Japan, we had uh, 52 uh, nuclear reactors before Fukushima accident happened. Uh, it occupied about 25% uh, of the, the electricity. Uh, after that, actually, the, all of the, the nuclear reactor was shut down first. Then, as I will explain later, the new the, the regulatory scheme was set up. And based on that, uh, five uh, reactors were permitted then actually uh, reoperating again. So among the 52 reactors existed, uh, only five is operating, less than 10%. So it means that the current, uh, I, I don't have a detailed number, but current uh, ratio of the nuclear might be 2% of the Japanese total electricity or something like that. In addition to the five, uh, already the seven reactors are permitted uh, under the new regulatory scheme, but still they have to go through various procedure. The one of the very important aspect of that is getting uh, approval from the local communities. So they have to negotiate with the mayors and the governors and sometimes with the resident. So the, the, this number roughly shows that how, how the local element is important for, for the operation of the nuclear power plant. Seven are still pending uh, for the operation. Okay, th th that's a kind of a background. Um, after Fukushima, uh, what happened is a kind of regulatory reform. And what's interesting and partly strange is that um, we, we have a, a accident in March uh, 2011. Then after that, the various investigation uh, was uh, uh, undertaken, including by the government, or by the Diet Cabinet, uh, no, no, the Congress, and also the non-governmental. And even before none of the, uh, the report made a, a final uh, conclusion, Actually, the basic direction of the, the reform was already announced uh, by the current government at that time, by the DPJ government, the Democratic Party of Japan. And they introduced the basic idea already August 2011. Uh, but against that, LDP, Liberal Democratic Party, the opposition party at that time, but currently the ruling party, they uh, counter-proposed the organizational scheme, so-called the, the, the uh, yeah, uh, the administrative committee model based on the administrative organization act, uh, article three. It's a kind of the independent co organization model followed by the U.S. Uh, regulatory commission. So anyway, the, well, the finally the the regulatory scheme which was set up is to set up a, a nuclear regulatory commission in the Ministry of Environment. Uh, in the discussion, well, one of the key issues discussed is how to make sure the independence. But what independence means, sometimes very ambiguous and uh, very controversial. The conclusion here is that at least the uh, agency should be independent from the uh, Ministry of Trade and Industry. The, the nuclear regulatory agency used to be under the Ministry of Trade and Industry, quasi independent, uh, at least they are claiming, uh, but they have some difficulty of the communication with the IEA, uh, IAEA at the time, so they are requiring a kind of independence. But whether that closer independence meet the criteria is a kind of a controversial issue. But anyway, at least removing from the Ministry of Trade and Industry, that's a kind of general agreement. But then what should be the form of organization and what it should be located, that is the issue. And finally, administrative committee team was uh, employed, not the typical agency model uh, following the bureaucratic hierarchical model. And finally, the, the, it was located in the Ministry of Environment. Of course, there was an uh, argument at that time that uh, maybe Ministry of Environment might have an interest to 
might mitigate the global warming, so they may, 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 they may be pro-nuclear, potentially, so there can be a conflict of interest. So that kind of argument was made. So the counter proposal is to put that uh, agency in the cabinet office, you know, separated from every ministry, including the environment or the, uh, the Ministry of Trade Industry. But on the other hand, you know, in the history of the administrative reform in Japan, if something happened, the new institution was set up in the cabinet office repeatedly. When the Financial Aid Service Agency was, uh, had made a scandal in the Ministry of Finance, they were removed from the Ministry of Finance, and financial agency was put in the cabinet office. And when the Japanese uh, mud cow disease issue happened, BSE issue happened in 2001 or two. Also, the Food Safety Commission was set up separated from Ministry of the Agriculture or Ministry of the Health and put on the cabinet office. So somehow the cabinet office became a kind of the small cabinet. You know, the separated looks independent, but actually they are very confusing because under the cabinet office, they have uh, eight ministers involved and uh, so much complicated organization structure, so they cannot be accountable. So partly because of that argument, final decision was set up in Ministry of Environment to keep some independence. Of course, some conflict of interest is embedded in that, but that, that is one of the issues which was uh, discussed at the time. But uh, in that context, one remaining issue is the uh, making sure the, the capability because formal independence is not enough to make a real independence, you know, substantial capability may be needed. So how, how to strengthen the capability of the, the, the newly established uh, nuclear uh, regulatory authority is one of the issues. So I don't have a time to deal with the detail, but I just would like to mention two things. Uh, actually, concerning the strengthening of the capacity, the kind of the uh, practice have been undertaken since around the 2001, uh, after the so-called uh, JCO accident happened, the end of the 90s, the uh, criticality fuel accident. And after that, government tried to increase the number of the officials and the regulatory agency, employing the mid-carrier staff from the manufacturers. But just increasing the number of the so-called experts having knowledge in technology is not enough. To be a regulator, they need to have a comprehensive view and a communication capability to talk with the various stakeholders, but it does not necessarily uh, be successful just getting the uh, new people from the industry. And another issue I mentioned here is that, uh, you know, the, how to make sure the independent expertise base from the new uh, the utilities is one of the issues. So in the context of the US, so when the accident happened, just like a three mile accident, people from the Navy played an important role in the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission or the IMPO, Institute for Nuclear Power Operators. It's a kind of the uh, self-organizing, uh, self-regulatory body by the manufacturers and the utilities. So in the, in the case of Japan, we don't have Navy, which operate the nuclear submarine, which require the substantial knowledge of the nuclear. So how, how, how should be the substantial base for the knowledge is one of the issues. In Japan, now, what's interesting is that we have a so-called dual system. It means that uh, there is a dual structure between the Ministry of Trade and Industry and the UTT on the one hand, and the Science Technology Agency and also the Japanese Atomic Research Energy Institute on the other hand. So the, the Science Technology Agency and the Japan Atomic Energy Research Institute invest so much money over the R&D in the research and development, but the technology produced are somehow not used by the UTTs. They like the technology imported from outside, the light, well, the light water reactor from the United States or the processing plant from the Aruba in the France. So somehow there, there is a group of the experts which is not used by the UTT. So somehow they play some role as a regulator in Nuclear Safety Commission or the uh, current new uh, the regulatory agency. But those kind of the sources will not continue in the long term. So that, that's uh, the current uh, prospect because uh, because from the administrative reform perspective, it's a waste of the resources, the R&D, which is not used. So anyway, the making sure, how to make sure the substantial independence is one remaining issue. Then the main topic today, the another remaining uh, important issue is the, the role of the local government. And the nuclear safety regulation, there is no official law for the local government. Basically, the safety is the issue for, for the national government. 
uh, of course, concerning the disaster preparedness and management, Roka plays some role, but it's not the major part. But historically, there has been a role played by the nuclear safety agreement uh, signed between the UTT and local government. It's informal, it's not based on the legal basis, more the voluntary basis, but, but there is a, you know, intense interaction between the local government and the UTTs, but it's not uh, formal. So, so how to deal with that is uh, one, one of the uh, issues uh, which have to be discussed in the context of the regulatory reform. So in that respect, the uh, French case is uh, interesting in that, you know, the, in the case of French, the name of the law is the safety and the transparency law. And concerning the transparency part, the sharing of information is very important. And in that context, local government or the prefectural government played an official role. So th this can be uh, one uh, potential official role. So local government, so how uh, it can be used in, in the Japanese context is actually the issue which was discussed. For, for example, one prefectural governor in Shiga, uh, next to the Kuri where the reactor is located, they have strong interest in the Kuri. Uh, and they tried to propose the Japanese model of Kuri in the context of Japan. And also, uh, when the regulatory reform was uh, enacted in the Diet, uh, Diet also made a kind of the statement, the declaration uh, together with the passing of the law, that some mechanisms for incorporating the local uh, government have to be considered. But so far, no nothing happened. So th th that's the kind of the, the context that we have. Uh, having those kind of the context in mind, uh, there are several uh, interesting aspects of the the the, the uh, Kuri. The, one is that uh, okay, the, this is just a historical development of the Kuri, so I try to skip that. So it was fi first uh, established in 1981 on the basis, but as already explained by the Tafune, uh, based on the 2006 Act of the Nuclear Safety and Transparency. Uh, the setting of the, the Kuri was uh, obli obligated to every uh, assigning place. And uh, in 2008, uh, there is uh, uh, the decret, uh, which is based by the detail about the uh, uh, composition of the membership and also the funding issue. Uh, so, so far as I understand, 50% uh, from the A uh, ASN, from the National Regulatory Agency, and 50% from the lo local government. And when the initial experiment was undertaken, some of the money came from the licensee, the UTTs, but so far as I understand, it was prohibited after the institutionalization of the uh, CURI in 2006. Um, the, this is the composition of the CURI, which was already mentioned. Uh, what's interesting is that the composition is specified, including the uh, assembly member and also the environmental organization, the labor union, and experts selected by the local people. So this is very important in the context of citizen science, uh, which was mentioned by the uh, presentation by the uh, Daphne. And uh, for, for thinking about the comparison with, with the situation in Japan, there are several uh, interesting aspects of, of the, 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 the Kuri. The, the first aspect is that uh, uh, the, this is the kind of the uh, uh, forum for the, uh, the communication between the site, local people, and the operators, UTTs. But, but basically, the second function is also uh, guaranteed by the Japanese scheme. But what's interesting is that there is an official mechanism to incorporate the kind of the, uh, uh, the ASN, the regulatory agency in that context. So in the case of Japan, uh, formal relations, not formal, but uh, um, Institutional relationship is only between the local government and the UTTs. But here, the ASA national agency was also part of the kind of the the the, the, the Kuri mechanism. So ASA together with the UTT have to attend the the Kuri if requested and uh, ask to respond to the question. So that that kind of the involvement of the national regulatory agency is not part of the Japanese system, and this might be uh, an interesting uh, aspect. And also together with that, national related agency, it can be part of the, the, the mechanism of the CRI. Um, um, another um, 
interesting aspect. Uh, there are several uh, the systematic questions we can uh, identify uh, relating to the uh, uh, to the uh, 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 And uh, one interesting aspect, which is also mentioned by the Daphne, is that it's not it's different from the kind of the mechanism for deciding the citing issue. So it's just uh, the literal uh, translation, so I'm not sure it's a uh, uh, good way of the translation, but in France, there is a so mechanism so called an open preliminary survey system uh, and for setting up a public debate for deciding the citing issue, including nuclear, but not just nuclear, including the major infrastructure projects. But that kind of the citing issue is somehow separated for, from the kind of the uh, CURI project. The CURI is somehow narrowing, narrowed down to the issue of the operation, the safety related issue, and public concern relating to that. As Daphne mentioned, that it can be a potential challenge. You know, for the future, it's possible to increase the, the scope of the uh, uh, jurisdiction. But on the other hand, narrowing down the scope is one of the, how to say, the right way uh, to, to make the system working. Uh, in the context of Japan, we, we have a the not formal cookie uh, mechanism, but we have a similar mechanism operating in the Kashiwazaki. Kashiwazaki is the major uh, nuclear site place in the Niigata prefecture, a part of the Tokyo Electric Power Company. And they organized a kind of meeting involving both the, you know, the supporting people in the local community and also the opposing group of the local community. So both groups can sit together if it is the scope is limited to the issue of the operation for the safety management. So both have to be care about that. But if the issue is we will accept a more you know, expansion of the power plant or not, in case those groups may have a different opinion. So limiting the scope of the query is one, one of the uh, interesting aspects. It can be a kind of the right uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, response, uh, thinking about the, 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 the situation in the local context, I think. Um, I will skip the detail. Uh, this is just a comparison of the situation in Japan and France. And what's interesting about France is that, as I mentioned, the ASN, the regulatory agency was involved, and also the dissemination of the information is clearly specified as an uh, uh, purpose of the, the police purpose, and also the local government has obligation relating to that. In Japan, there is agreement between the local government and the utility, but there is no obligation for the local government concerning the public engagement or the information uh, dissemination. So, so th th that aspect uh, can be an uh, interesting uh, uh, complementary uh, part uh, we can think of. But concerning the substantial uh, power, uh, somehow, or at least on the de facto basis, you know, the Japanese local government has been very strong. Uh, uh, the, some agreement clearly required prior consultation, or sometimes agreement from the local government for the operating the power plant or for the amendment of the facility and so on. So concerning that kind of power, you know, Japanese local government is strong. But just strong is good or bad, but that's another issue which can be discussed. One, one of the interesting, or I'm not sure it's true or not, but the story relating to the Fukushima Daiichi power plant, which made a very big uh, disastrous uh, accident, was that that uh, the power plant uh, has been using a very old facility since the uh, late 60s. So the Tokyo Electric Power Company wants to think to replace with a new power reactor because it is uh, more safer, perhaps, of the, uh, the newer technology. But even for replacing with the newer technology, they have to get an agreement from the local community. So partly because of that, it is said that the TEPCO hesitated to, to replace the, the old technology with the new one and continue to use the old technology, and it is one of the causes for, 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 the, for the disaster. So, you know, the just strong uh, local government rule is good or bad, that, that's uh, another issue. Uh, finally, uh, I'd like to mention some of the suggestions of the experience of the CUTI in the context of Japan, uh, somehow defeating some aspects I already mentioned. 
Uh, one aspect is that, as I mentioned a already a few times, already the, in the case of trans, the transparency is uh, clearly specified in the purpose of the law. So because of that, the local government can play an official role relating to the, to the information sharing. So that's uh, one aspect. And also, somehow relating to that, the, there is a clear, uh, how to say, the distinction between information sharing, the role of the police, and the kind of discussion forum for decision making about the tightening issues. So to those two uh, functions or separated. Of course, it can be characterized as a limit, but also it can be characterized as uh, one of the wise ways to make the CUI as an uh, effective uh, mechanism. And also, one of the uh, interesting aspects of the CUI is bringing the regulator in the context. So, before Fukushima, substantial issue might be the issue between the local government and the UTT. In case, safety agreement, which has been traditionally used, might be good. But now, the real concern for the local community is whether the national regulation is well uh, accommodating the kind of the real issue local community is facing. So in that respect, not just the communication between the local government and the UTT, communication between the local government and the regulator is very important. So in that respect, some mechanism for bringing the regulator in the official uh, forum is important. So in that respect, CRI is also interesting in the concept. Uh, the, the third issue I mentioned here, I use the word joint fact finding. Uh, it's a kind of mechanism for bringing the expert of different type of expert in the process. So this is a mechanism for the citizen group or the opposing group to bringing their own expert in the process and uh, different type of experts doing the joint research about the uh, you know, environmental impact and so on. So just somehow similar to the citizen science issue. So, so, but anyway, this kind of mechanism can be utilized in the context of the, the CURI. So that's the third point. And last point, but this is very difficult, is that the issue of who should be involved. And so, so far, uh, because uh, in the case of Japan, the safety agreement is made between the local fighting government and the UTT. Because of that, the people involved is the people living in the fighting city or fighting uh, local government. But sometimes the UTT, uh, you know, the power plant is located at the border. So some people next to the border is close to, to, to the reactor, but they have no say to that. So sometimes they claim that they should be also involved. So that's one of the reasons why the Shiga prefectural governor having interest in Kuri. The Kuri has a clear criteria that the people perhaps in the 50 kilometers have to be involved. So regardless of the site of the, you know, the nuclear power plant, people living under 50 kilometers can be part of that. So, so 50 kilometers is one of the you know, ways for defining the extension area. But Thinking about potential impact of the nuclear, 50 uh, kilometers is enough. Or thinking about the disaster evacuation, more broader people should be involved. But in case, what should be the mechanism? That, that's the kind of influent uh, issue, the kind of the mechanism we have. That, that's relating the issue of the mission impossible uh, mentioned by the previous Daphne uh, presentation. Okay, that, that's the end. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.